the ever-evolving wheel of McLaren's evolution, pushing the boundaries of motor racing at their multi-million dollar technology centre. It's here, year after year, McLaren churn out newly refined sports cars with the latest gadgetry with the aim of being the best. So this car on stage behind me is McLaren's latest edition. We're here for the unveiling of the GT3. It's the racing version of this car here, the MP4 12C road car. And we're also here today to speak with Martin Whitmarsh, McLaren CEO. People say, well, why, why are you doing this? Uh, we're doing it, one, because we can't help ourselves. We're about motor racing and we're about the passion uh, and therefore we wanted to go and race the car. And two, if we didn't, frankly, our customers were going out there and race it anyway. So I think if it's going to go racing, we feel we should control the game. So this is a GT3 car uh, that we're going to develop during the course of this year. We'll race it again because we can't help ourselves. We are racers as part of that development process. But at the end of the year, 20 lucky customers will acquire these cars and they'll race them in primarily European GT series uh, in 2012. So I'm here with Oliver Turvey who's going to be racing one of these GT3s. It's a bit of a monster this isn't it? Yeah definitely it's a, an amazing car and uh, certainly one, one of the best looking cars I've ever seen and uh, you know it's great that McLaren are launching this GT3 car and uh, you know it's a fantastic car to be in um, and from a driver's point of view we've got a Formula 1 type steering wheel here um, with all the controls on the steering wheel. Yeah. When will we see you in a Grand Prix? Uh, hopefully soon. Um, yes, uh, I mean, uh, I've been that's my, been my dream for many years, and uh, you know I've been working hard towards that. So, you know, hopefully I feel with McLaren, it's a fantastic company to be with one of the top teams, one of the most uh, with the best histories within Formula One. McLaren's nerve centre here in Surrey resembles NASA. It's really high tech. There are laboratories where the development of cars is taking place and there's a real sense of history of McLaren in motor racing. And of course, I had to ask Martin Whitmarsh about McLaren's involvement in Formula One. We had a fantastic World Championship last year where largely all the paddock polemics weren't there. We went into the last few races, five drivers capable of winning that World Championship, went right down to the wire uh, and one of the greatest seasons of our time. We've had three fantastically exciting races. The last race was very exciting and I thought it was quite good. Uh, but uh, I think we've got to make sure we build that. That's what people want. I think people are getting fed up of, of the infighting and the politics of you know, within the paddock. It's about brave young men in, in the most extreme, most advanced vehicles in the world at the highest level of motorsport, the pinnacle of motorsport. And that's what it should be about, not about who owns it, who's fighting with who out behind the scenes. I know, I know some people are interested in that, but really the sport is fascinating enough without that. I was going to say, I'm, a, I'm an F1 fan, I love all the mm. scandal. Yeah, no, and, and some people do. Uh, but I think, uh, I personally think that that scandal, you know, and the way in which we manage it has not been uh, the way in which we should develop this sport. Now, as well as everything else, you're also chairman of the Formula One Teams Association. Mm. What's your take on this takeover bid in the news? Well, again, I, I read it in the news. I think uh, it's great uh, if you're involved in a company or a business or a sport where people, other people than those that own it currently also want to own it, then that's an encouraging sign. Uh, so I think it's, it's to be encouraged. I think we, uh, within the sport, the teams have come together under FOTA for the first time in 60 years. We're much more cohesive than we've ever been. Uh, we've got to form stronger relationships with the commercial rights holder, whether it's the current or future ones, to make sure we can develop a sport. What about the specific bid with Exor having a, a stake in Ferrari? Does that worry you at all? No, I don't. I mean, again, there's been a long history of uh, conflict between McLaren and, and uh, Ferrari. We've been slogging it out for 30 years uh, in quite a conflict. I think, as people know, within in the, in the sport, you know, I've made it uh, my role to we can't lead, Ferrari and McLaren can't lead unless we can resolve our difficulties for the last uh, several years now. The relationship between Ferrari and McLaren has been excellent. We work together. We have very similar views and visions of what this business needs. So to the disappointment of some, uh, that to, to the, for the time being, that war doesn't exist. We're working together to improve the sport. You mentioned your relationship with Ferrari there. Mm. Mike Coffin, of course, is um, mm. Sacked by McLaren yeah. for his uh, involvement in the spy, hmm. Spygate yeah. scandal. Do you think it's right he's back in F1 with Williams? Well, well, again, I think we've got to say it's what nearly four years since the events that led us to have to dismiss Mike, and I think you know, we've got to look forward now. I think the important thing is that Williams 
you know, been a great team in the past. I think their last few years have struggled this year in particular. Uh, let's hope that uh, they're part of, of the reforming of, of that team and that we can get uh, Williams up being more respectable in their performance. Why was Coughlin sacked originally? Um, was he a bit of a scapegoat? I mean, I, I wonder why he was specifically sacked. No, I, I think, again, without going back to what happened over uh, four years ago, Mike uh, was at the centre of something. He made some mistakes and we had no choice. Uh, so, you know, not a question. He, he acknowledges that. I think he's acknowledged it yesterday. So we didn't have a choice. We had to take that action. Uh, and, you know, I've had no contact with Mike personally in the last uh, four years. But I think uh, we've got to look forward now and, and uh, hope that Williams is a successful team in the future. I must ask you about team orders, which mm. have um, been allowed for this season. Yeah. I mean, I find it a bit strange to sort of prioritise your, your drivers in the team. I don't think yes. you do. In the no, well, I think you know well that uh, we, we haven't, and that's uh, been our policy. Arguably, it's cost us some world championships, and we've been criticised for that. So, you know, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But I think our view is that going into a Formula One season, you should give both of your drivers uh, equal opportunity to win that world championship, and that's what we've always done. I think that's why today, you know, we've got two world champions in the team that's why I think they're happy to be in our team why they're happy to join us because they thought they'd get a fair crack of the whip we'll do our best to, to continue to do that and finally Red Bull they've got to be the ones to beat this season no, Red Bull's doing a great job but I don't think we can underestimate you know at the moment people are talking about Red Bull and it's McLaren's job to beat them I don't and, and I certainly I see it that way uh, but I also I don't uh, ignore the fact that that you know, we've got Mercedes, we've got Ferrari, we've got Renault. They're all capable of coming back very strongly this year and it's very early days. Whoever succeeds this season, it's clear from the resources McLaren plough into their development, they'll ensure they'll be one of the teams at the top. Louise Potter, Al Jazeera, Woking in Surrey.